Dayton, Oregon. This is NBC 16 News at 530. I see this data as a sign of progress, an indication that our approach is taking us in the right direction. Oregon's governor and state health officials say a spike in COVID-19 cases are beginning to level off, but new models suggest cases could begin to rise again. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Mazur. So let's get right into COVID-19 cases statewide. Oregon is reporting another near record day of new cases in the 400s. The Oregon Health Authority reports 423 new confirmed and presumptive cases and nine new deaths. Statewide, Oregon has passed 20,000 cases and has 348 deaths. Of the total number of cases in the state, more than 1,700 patients are hospitalized. Well, a brand new modeling report from OHA includes three future scenarios. First, if transmission continues at the current level during the next month, the estimated number of new daily infections will remain steady at approximately 1,000 per day. And the number of daily new severe cases will increase slightly from 17 to 19. Second, if transmission decreases by 10% and continues at that level during the next month, the model projects approximately 300 new infections per day and nine new severe cases per day by August 27th. And third, if transmission increases by 10% and continues at that level during the next month, the model projects approximately 2,300 new infections per day and 32 new severe cases per day by August 27th. Well, Lane County Public Health and the University of Oregon have teamed up on a new project to boost contact tracing. That's one of the big tools in the battle against the coronavirus. NBC 16's Tom Adams joins us live in the studio with the latest on the Corona Core team. Tom. Well, Jacqueline, as Lane County's COVID-19 case count continues to climb, a new program at the U of O is helping to bolster Lane County Public Health's efforts on contact tracing. County officials say the joint effort right now couldn't come at a better time. This isn't just any office space at the University of Oregon's Health Center. These students are on the informational front lines in the fight against COVID-19. I love it. It's just been amazing to be in a room with people that are all, you know, called to action in this whole experience. You're looking at some of the 16 students in the U of O Student Corps to combat coronavirus, Corona Core for short. So contact tracing is critical for containing the virus. The team is a joint project of Lane County Public Health and University Health Services. Contacts are the web of people exposed to a person who is positive with COVID-19. Those contacts are called by students and they're advised to self-isolate for 14 days. Be quarantined. Um, and so if they test positive, they, we, we know that they are out of circulation, so it stops the spread. If, in fact, they do need to be quarantined for 14 days, well, somebody needs to call them every day and say, hey, did you develop respiratory symptoms? Did you get a fever? And the students are doing that as well. The calls by the students have another very important purpose, getting resources to clients during their quarantine time. Issues can include missing work or buying groceries. Laura Walter says the team is truly a cross-section of students. Pre-med students, a lot of counselors, counseling students as well, so it's great to just put all these minds together. We are not going to stop this virus in its tracks, so what we need is a, a deep bench to allow us to identify people early and decrease the risk of spread. Students working very hard to flatten the curve and make the community a little bit safer. And by the way, there's no free weekend for the Corona Corps. The center operates from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. seven days a week. The Corps has handled about one third of the contact tracing calls for Lane County Public Health. All right, Tom, thank you. Well, the fate of the Shutter Creek Correctional Facility in North Bend will be decided next week during a special session of the Oregon Legislature. Shutter Creek has just under 100 employees who are nervously waiting to know what that decision will be. Employees tell us the mood has been somber at the facility as everyone weighs their options of retirement, transfer, or layoff. We feel like you know, we've been doing a good job for years. We do so much community work. We've, we've wrestled through this COVID issue. Uh, I feel like we've come out on top, and then we spent all this infrastructure money, and now I feel like we're being punished. 
He says not only will employees and their families be affected, the inmates and their families who visit will be affected as well. Shutter Creek has the capacity to house 300 inmates and currently has about 200. If the 30 year old correctional facility were to be shut down, those inmates would be transferred to other places around the state. Well, let's take a first look at weather. Alan Matthews joins us now. Happy Friday, Alan. It is Friday. Yes, I know a lot of people are excited <laughs> about the weekend. Things will be warming up as well. Actually, tomorrow, very similar to what we saw today. Sunday will the day be the day that things get much warmer. But we look at what's going on right now. Still holding on at 80 degrees in Eugene under a mostly sunny sky. It is a little windy out there. North northeast winds at 16 miles per hour. We are seeing some gusts a little stronger than that. Our humidity at 27%. We look at our fire potential, and right now, Lynn and Lane County still listed at high and Coos and Douglas County, they did lower with the rainfall. They are down at moderate, but I'm sure we'll probably see that as these dry conditions uh, will continue. So we'll probably see that uh, move back up to high shortly, but uh, we'll have more actually on our uh, wildfire uh, season coming up here a little bit later on in the newscast. Not much to show you with the radar satellite. Things are relatively calm, and if you're planning to wash your car this weekend, you got a good weekend for it. Looking at mostly sunny skies. Again, things will be getting a bit warmer for Sunday. We'll give you all those weather details a little bit later on. Jacqueline. All right, thank you, Alan. While developing tonight, Eugene Police is looking for 36-year-old Bettina Francisca Madrid from Eugene. Police say she was last seen yesterday after not returning home. Police say her car was found in Churchill. Police say she is white with shoulder-length reddish-brown hair, green eyes, and freckles. She is 5 feet 10 inches and weighs 145 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact EPD. And the search continues. It, it's now in a progress for a man last seen at a campground southeast of Cottage Grove. 27 year old Michael Bryson was last seen early Wednesday morning in the Bryce Creek Road area near Champion Creek Road. He apparently walked away from his group and has not been seen since. Search and rescue teams were in the area again today, along with groups of friends. He's one of our best friends. He's probably the most loving person I've ever met. Um, very selfless. Yeah, if any of us were missing, Michael would totally be out here doing the same. They hope to have his photo up in as many gas stations and rest stops as possible between Eugene and Cottage Grove. Bryson, meantime, is six feet two inches tall and weighs approximately 180 pounds with short brown hair and hazel eyes. He was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, tan shorts and white Crocs with rainbows on them. He may also be wearing a brown corduroy baseball cap. If you've seen him or know where he is, please call the Lane County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> A Black Lives Matter and Black Joy Oregon March is scheduled tomorrow in Coos Bay. An organizer says they want to show city leaders their list of suggestions in an effort to better serve the people in their community. They include justice for victims of hate crimes, mental health access, and increased diversity. Speaking with the community as a whole, we just want more awareness brought to us. We want more acknowledgement. We want to be known that, hey, we're struggling right now and this is something that we need help with instead of brushing us off, can you help us type thing. Brown says they'll have people there to educate the community about black culture and history. Organizers say they'll have private security and de-escalators on hand to keep the march peaceful. Coos Bay police say they will have a presence at the event and they are not asking for outside assistance from citizens. When we have these events that we always have other groups and organizations that feel the police need their assistance to maintain order and that is not the case. We, we do not need any assistance to assure that this is going to be a peaceful demonstration. Organizers will be providing face masks and hand sanitizer at the event. We'll meet at the boardwalk at noon and march to City Hall. The Corvallis School District will remove Jefferson, Wilson and Hoover names from three elementary schools. This comes after the school board voted six to one to remove the names of former presidents last night. School board chair Sami El Abdadrabas says the superintendent will form a task force for new name options. The task force plans to start between next month and October. Recommendations will later be presented to the school board. It's unknown how long the process will take. The group will take input from students, teachers and parents.
And looking ahead, Oregon lawmakers will return to the Capitol for a special session on Monday. They question, the question rather still remains if the session will be solely dedicated to rebalancing the state budget or addressing police reform. This is the second special session this year. During the first, lawmakers considered bills to address COVID-19 and police accountability. They hope a second special session will stick to the budget. They're looking to fill a $1.2 billion budget hole. Some proposed cuts totaling $387 million across state agencies and utilizing $400 million in emergency funds from the Education Stability Fund. Well, coming up on your only local news at 530 with dry conditions in our area, Willamette National Forest is enforcing fire restrictions, what you need to know to avoid a fire this summer. And when we're not on air, we continue to bring you the latest developments on our website, NBC16.com, and on our Facebook page at KMTR News. You can also download our KMTR News app on your phone for free. We'll be back after the break.